Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're gonna to be talking about high availability and failover in an IT network. We're gonna talk about the good practices to put in place, the infrastructure, the setup, the configuration to put in place to ensure that your network is redundant uh, and has sufficient failover so that if devices fail, if you have a disaster, if you have backup things that you need to restore, uh, things are operational and work as expected. So nowadays, businesses need to be running almost 100% of the time. Regardless of whether you're a small, medium or large businesses, uh, most companies will need to have all of their IT operations running at least eight hours a day, sometimes 24 hours a day, seven days, 365 days a year, depending on what sort of services you are running. So making sure that you've got the right high availability and redundancy configured into all of your infrastructure is extremely important. Network redundancy and how you configure your network is extremely important in any business, in any infrastructure configuration that you may have. You've got your server components, making sure that your servers are redundant, making sure that all of that is all redundant. But if your network is poorly set up and your physical connections, your physical infrastructure is poorly set up and not with high availability thought of beforehand, you're gonna have problems as devices or links or you know, even worse, sites go down, you have to invoke disaster recovery. So making sure that your network is configured with redundancy and high availability is of utmost importance. You start off with your physical infrastructure. We're talking about firewalls, we're talking about switches, we're talking about routers and other network components. Always look at redundancy at the forefront of your mind whenever you are procuring any of these pieces of infrastructure. My general rule is, as we said, we always buy two of everything. So if you are looking at getting a firewall, buy a firewall for your primary, a firewall for your, sec for your secondary. If your primary firewall goes down, your firewall controls all of your, you know, your security coming in and out of your network. If that goes down, you've potentially lost your network. Uh, same deal with your switches. If you've got your core switches, if you've got switches, um, you know that, that all of your computers and your servers and your phones and everything are all running into if they're all running into one switch and your switch goes down you've lost access to your network for most of your infrastructure most of your workstations and your servers in your infrastructure further to that buying two may not be sufficient you know you could have all of your devices running across the two of them but they're still running into potentially into one switch. So I've got one computer running into one switch and a different computer running into a different switch. If that switch still goes down, you've still got problems, for example. So always think about not only procuring them in pairs or in you know, groups of multiple uh, switches, but think about how you're gonna design it. Think about how you're gonna design your VLANs across your switches. Have VLANs spread between your switches. Have those switches running into other switches for multiple levels. You know, they're called trunking. So you can trunk your switches together to form multiple networks within your network. So have multiple switches, multiple firewalls procured uh, so that if a physical um, connection goes down, a physical infrastructure piece goes down, you've got another one to pick up the slack. So always have everything set up in pairs. A good example would be a server. If you have a server, a server itself should be procured with one or more network cards with multiple points. I'd have one of those network points at the back of a server running into one switch and the other point running into a different switch. So if one of my switches goes down, the server can still communicate to an alternate switch and then out to my firewall, out to my router, and then out onto my into, out to the internet or an alternate site. So always doing everything in pairs is of utmost importance. So your network device should also have two power supplies built in. So not only one, so that if one power goes down, you've lost your entire switch or firewall, but have two, one on each side, so that if one goes down, your switch or your firewall can still be operational. If you're in a business, you more than likely have got an internet connection out, um, out of your business, out into the cloud, out into the, into the network, into the internet. Um, your ISP would have procured this for your internet service provider. My general recommendation is to always have at least two internet connections. One is your primary and one is a secondary. You could have them both active-active, or you could have one active and the other one passive, and you're sitting there passively. The reason for this is if your primary interconnection goes down, you can switch over to a second one. 
It's always important to have one there set up as redundancy in case the primary one does go down for whatever reason. That could be your router going down, your, you know, your router that's been provided by your ISP. If your ISP goes down, look at perhaps your second link being with a different carrier. So you can have what's called carrier diversity. So you don't have both internet links running out to the same service provider. You have one going to one service provider, one going out into a second service provider. If we're talking about links, we're also talking about potentially links going out to different services, going out to different sites, into different offices, into perhaps into customer locations. Uh, looking at setting everything up with two links at least. If I've got site A as my head office, as my core office, and then I've got site B, which could be a remote office, have the link between site A and site B set up with two connections. Again, they don't have to both be active active. You can have one as your primary link, which is a faster bandwidth, faster performance, and have a secondary link set up as a failover. So that if your primary link does go down, you've got a secondary link there to back it up. Because the worst thing that you wanna happen is that one of those links goes down. If you have a single, single link, uh, that link goes down, you could potentially lose access to that office. That secondary link could be set up in a multiple you know, set of ways. You can have a VPN connection, you can have a direct connection, you could be going via an MPLS, whatever that may be, but making sure that you've at least got two redundant links between all of your sites. If you've got connection into particular cloud services um, out, outside of your internet, for example, perhaps to a backup service out on the cloud, perhaps to a cloud-based infrastructure such as AWS or Azure, have two links. Your primary goes down, your secondary can kick in and still be operational. Apart from all of this, you've got all your physical connections, your physical infrastructure in place, your physical links, dual links all in place, everything's all redundant. Make sure that the routing protocols that you decide to use between all of your connections uh, is the correct routing protocol to use. Things such as EIGRP, uh, RIP, um, BGP, whatever their connection will be, each of these protocols will have different uh, redundancy built in, will have different smarts built in on the background to understand how your network is functioning, understand your different IP addresses, your different routes, how everything's sort of functioning through your network. So it's very important to think about how you're going to architect your network between sites so that you do have redundancy and high availability thought out and um, planned before you actually configure your network. Think about perhaps your routers as well. We mentioned um, you know, having dual internet connections, dual links between your sites. Nowadays, there are a lot of routers that can also incorporate two connections built into the one router. Perhaps one connection is a physical ethernet NIC connection, right, going out to a particular service, and the other one could be connected to a 4G service. It could, you know, a router could have a 4G SIM built into the actual unit, but if the primary goes down, you can still connect to a service over a 4G. So you can actually now have redundancy built into the actual single unit also. I hope you found this video helpful. I really hope that you did learn something, that it was something useful that you can put uh, into practice and give you some tips when you are designing your IT in your business. Um, love it if you commented, give me a thumbs up and uh, we'll talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.